We're continuing our two hand whip work series and today we're going to talk about the whip length. Uh, when we're throwing the overhand we kind of visualize almost a pie shaped area. The whip goes toward our target or toward the person we're playing with and then it comes back over our shoulder. And we want to be able to maintain our whips and our control of the whip in a particular length. So I'm going to suggest that your two hand whip lane, ideally, as you get improved skills, should be no larger than your single hand whip lane. So if I'm throwing single handed, and you can observe the, the whip traveling, I'm going to suggest that as we migrate to two-handed whip throwing that we should be able to throw two-handed and use the same dimensional lane that we used as we were throwing single-handed. So when I'm throwing in the mirror, I kind of visualize that mirror as representing my lane. And I try when I'm practicing to keep my whips in the lane that that mirror creates, just as a practice mechanism. And you can see my practice isn't perfect. This chair, the chair over there on the left side is kind of in my lane, but you know, we have limited space in our home for my whip practice. And I'm assuming when you practice in your home, you're going to have limited space as well. So we have these challenges to overcome. But <clears throat> today's video is just to introduce the concept of a lane and my contention that the lane you establish when throwing single-handed, that as you improve your skills, you should be able to throw two-handed within that same uh, geometric lane or dimensional lane, three-dimensional space. As always, thanks for watching Whips in the Dungeon.